Hello, and welcome to Creative Curves, where we talk with creative individuals in various fields about their creative process. I'm your host, Blue Sirens. On today's episode, we welcome Nicholas Perez. Nicholas is a hip hop producer raised in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, refining his craft at Berkeley College of Music in Boston before spending a decade honing his skills further in New York. Known for his engaging social media presence, Nicholas posts beats for artists to duet and remix, growing him a loyal following. He frequently updates his beat store and plans to continue to release lo-fi and hip-hop tracks on Spotify under the name I Make Things I Like. Listen in to hear more. Hey, Nick, how's it going? What's going on, man? Dude, it's great to have you on. I feel like I see you every single time when I open up TikTok. You're the first thing that pops <laughs> up. And it's great because like I know you make you make beats and you do a lot of really cool sampling in them. And I know you post sometimes multiple times a day, I feel, or maybe I just don't open up TikTok enough and it's just all right there <laughs> for me. Um, but you, you post quite a bit and you have a couple of goals when it comes to posting. Uh, what are those goals and like, how does it relate to the projects you're working on right now? Yeah, dude. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. Pleasure to be here. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I try to post at least once a day. I don't do weekends cause I do have a one year old. So I like mm -hmm. set that a bit of a limitation for myself, unless it's just like some little funny joke. Um, but for like, actually like making a beat and posting it daily, um, essentially right now kind of like the system that I have in place for that is I'm like trying to literally make something from scratch every day record a video for it you know edit it get it all uploaded um, and I usually try to post I I found I consistently post at like 9 p.m uh, every day so that's kind of like the goal that I've set for myself is like make a track you know, I, a big change that has been, that I've done lately is like actually making, I used to do like only the, a track that was like the length of the video that I was going to post, which is like, I wasn't making a full track. So now that I'm like doing full two and a half, three minute tracks, uploading them for sale every day. Um, it's a lot, but it is like kind of setting those goals of like consistently doing this every day has definitely like sharpened, uh, sharpened my blades quite a bit. And uh, every time I kind of set one of these goals of like this target thing I'm going to do, I can see not necessarily the improvement on like numbers or views or anything like that. Sometimes it does, but it more just translates to like big jumps in like my skill and like how good I am able like to do these tracks and how, how much better I get it whether it's sampling or just kind of the whole process gets more streamlined, the more I like set these goals and like achieve them on a daily basis. So that's kind of the, the daily grind for me these days. Yeah. And I mean, you're, you're on top of it and you're definitely grinding all of it out. Like what made you say, I'm going to do this every single day. And what's the end goal of it? Like at what point in time are you going to say, Hey, I don't need to do it every single day or I've done it for so long, I need to move on to something, some other aspect or something like that. Yeah, so I mean, for a, for a long time, I was doing well, what I call like the rap to this series where I was sampling a lot of just like the standard old 70s and 60s, like vinyl and stuff I found on YouTube, old artists sampling them, making a short little beat and then wanting people to like duet or remix them on, you know, Instagram and, and TikTok. Um, because I was sampling things, it wasn't like I was able to monetize that in any way because I don't own the things I'm sampling and I'm not clearing those samples as I'm like uploading these videos. So if I turned my account into a business account, it would immediately like flag those tracks and oh. not let me use them. Um, so a lot of the times people were like, you know, asking me like, well, what do I get if I blow this sound up? And I'm like, I, I even created a video sort of explaining like, I'm only, I'm doing this, like not only to show what I can do and kind of sharpen my, my skills in that sense, but also kind of give you an opportunity as like an artist to jump on this and show what you can do, like with, with a track that's like a cool sample track. 
Um, and neither of us have to kind of pay for anything, but we're also not going to make money. It was more to like sort of build a fan base. Um, and that was cool for a while, but I did feel it was getting a little bit stagnant. And I felt the like limitations of, of using these samples that weren't cleared and that couldn't be cleared because, I mean, for the most part, when you're going to go clear a sample, I can't really clear a sample for a beat that I'm then going to sell to an artist because whoever's going to want to clear that sample kind of wants to know what the end product is going to be and not like kind of the halfway point of me just creating a track before an artist is on there. Yeah. Um, and so to move away from that, I created this new goal where I was going to upload a beat for sale every day, which I don't know if I've translated that very well in the videos that I'm posting, where the reason I'm able to do that now is because I'm creating all the samples from scratch. And so I'm no longer sampling old 70s vinyl or anything like that. I'm actually spending the first half of the day creating a song that's a track that sounds like an old sample and then sampling the track that I made uh, to make a beat and then selling that track online on my beat store on BeatStars. So it's kind of like a two part process now where I'm like, I got pretty good at making beats sampling old artists and so now what i did was i'm like i'll make the sample myself super slow like old school 70s soul sample with a lot of help from my wife who's a vocalist so if i ever need like amazing female vocals on there that's a super easy go-to so i definitely understand that that's a little bit of a hack on my part like i've got a cheat code there yeah you're just but using your resources that's all yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I do like, I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a singer, but like, that's kind of the beauty of, of sampling myself is that I get to do these vocals uh, and like, do like these harmonies and kind of manipulate them a little bit. And you don't really hear a lot of that manipulation when it's pitched up, which is kind mm -hmm. of a standard thing to do when you're sampling old soul. Um, and so now it's kind of like, I got good at making beat sampling. Now I got good at making samples and sampling myself and uh at first i set that like daily goal just because i feel like that's the standard procedure for like you know day one of doing so and so yeah definitely once you know we got to like day five day six and we were like stressing and filming videos and doing all this stuff all in in that small amount of time that we have having a a one-year-old um i was like okay i'm not doing weekends so i still say one every day for 30 days but it's more like one every work day for 30 days yeah. but um but it's worked out it's been great you know and and I mean the end goal for me as much as I do enjoy and like get motivated by the like video aspect of it because I do have like some fun with like the creative side of like filming videos and getting the right angle and the editing and the color grading like that is something I enjoy that that gets me motivated but the end goal for sure is like um, move away from social media and actually get like placements with artists and kind of build with maybe some indie artists that aren't like, you know, as as big right now. I've reached out to a bunch of different indie artists that, um, you know, like it's a lot easier now that I have these beats that don't need sample clearance to be able mm -hmm. to be like, you know, check through these. Let's see what you like. And we can like go from there because for the most part, an indie artist isn't going to have the budget to go out and clear a sample and, you know, then give me splits on things by the end of it all, they'd end up like losing money on a song. So I didn't want that to be the case. So it's kind of where we're at now where I've got this nice catalog built up of like all these tracks that sound like sample tracks, but actually don't use any samples. It's all just me and my wife and, you know, making everything from scratch. So it's pretty sweet. Dude, that's a really smart move like that's using using that big brain you got there that <laughs> you got hit under that hat yeah. uh, dude that's also it's really stressful i feel like to make a beat every single day like i've done beat tober for a couple of years and then i did beat tober one year and i was like i'm gonna do january as well and like day six of january i was like i i don't know if i can do this like because i feel like 
for me, I was only dedicating about like an hour a day towards like making it and filming it. And then I had to like go to work or do life things. And yeah. so uh, I know this is kind of like you do other things kind of like outside music and stuff. But for the most part, I've, it sounds like it's what you can spend a decent amount of your day on making the beat and like filming it. And like, yeah, you got you got a one year old. So definitely weekends are off limits. Uh, yeah. But just doing it like five days in a row, I'm sure when you hit Saturday, you're like, bro, I need a break. This is like creatively, creatively and like energy and like emotional energy. It's also it's got to be drained. So like when it hits Monday, I know you mentioned like the filming aspect gets you motivated and stays engaged. But if it's been a long day of making these these beats and these samples, when it hits Monday, how are you like? ready to get back in gear and get going yeah i mean definitely over the weekend i'm like spending a lot of that time listening to music that i enjoy and listening to i try to find a lot of it's 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 more rare nowadays at least on like the mainstream uh like charts to have uh some of these like artists that are still using samples i feel like a lot of it is what like i would call I mean, I mainly do hip hop, obviously. So that's the charts I'm listening to. And a lot of it is what like my wife and I would call like Halloween trap, where it's just kind of okay. these like spooky, spooky piano like lines with like yeah. just hard hitting drums under them, which isn't necessarily my jam. Um, so it is a lot of like digging to find things that kind of gas me up and just like, okay, like this is how they chop this. And I love going on like um, who sampled.com and typing in you know, whatever artist or track that I liked, and it'll show me what they sampled and hearing kind of like where it came from to where it got to. So that's a huge motivator for sure. Just like hearing, you know, like, oh, you took this and made this out of it. Like, you know, I'm going to kind of reverse engineer that and try to make something like the sample you made. Uh, and just sort of setting like, over the weekend, I'll almost like get excited about like different challenges. Like, oh, I've never done one like that. And so like, let me try to make that sample and really like just break down in a way like what's going, like sometimes it's, you know, oh, this has heavy strings or this is super guitar focused or this has like crazy old school 60s harmonies. Like what are those vocals doing? And just really like gassing myself up on the challenge of, of could I do this? You know, can can I actually make something like this? And like, even the aspect of like, can I make it sound old as well? You know, mm. like record something in and with all the new tech that we have now, it sounds super modern. And so then like running things through like isotope vinyl and like, you know, really getting like an old, old sound on it and like kind of, kind of degrading the, the yeah. sample in a way to get it to sound old and get it into like the same vibe. And I know a lot of people kind of have a little bit of a mentality of like, almost like don't base your music or don't try to quote unquote copy other people like to, so, cause you're not gonna have your own sound, but I've always felt like you're never really, I mean, at least for myself, I'm never really gonna be able to achieve the exact same thing. And I'm not trying to in a way, and so even if I like go like, let me make a sample like this and let me even sample it in a similar way that they did by the end of it, the tracks never sound the same. And I ended like, I, I, even though I tried to follow their path, I, it, it's so impossible to follow the same path that you end up in a totally new place anyways. And then like, that is sort of your sound, you know, like, I feel like a lot of times people are afraid of like, oh, like I've, I've worked with artists that they're like, oh, I really like Drake stuff, but like, I don't want to sound like Drake. And I'm always just sort of like, you're not going to, you know, you're not, <laughs> Drake. you're not Drake. Like, don't worry about that. We're not going to end up just being Drake 2.0, you know, like, you, like you can, you can try to get there. And just because you're you and he's, he's him, like, you're going to end up somewhere new and that'll, that will be your sound. You sound different. I'm not the same. I'm not 40, you know, like I'm not producer. Like I don't, we're not going to end up in the same place. So that's sort of like what gets me, gets me going come Monday is just like, all right, I, I kind of lay out over the weekend, like some challenges that I'm going to try to achieve. And then come Monday, like, let's see what we can do. 
Dude, that's a it's a really good point thing to point out of like the importance of breaks. I think people always are on the mindset of like I've got to grind. I didn't get enough to done today. I've got to really push to get more done tomorrow. And I think like yeah, maybe during the week it's a good idea to have that like mentality. But the importance of like taking those breaks and being like, let me recalibrate what my goals or my focuses are going to be for the next five days. Uh, one not only can make you feel more motivated, uh, but present a new set of challenges and adventures that you can go on in your craft. Uh, you yeah. mentioned like the sampling aspect of like gassing you up and like seeing how other people do it. I totally feel that man. Like there's a page I follow that shows the original audio and then they're like, okay, here's a sample, here's a sample. And then how it turns into a full track. And mm -hmm. uh, anytime I see them do something with Daft Punk, I'm like, wait, all Daft Punk did was add the drums. Like everything else is just that sample. I'm like, that's crazy. And so I don't sample, but when I see things like that, I'm like, maybe I should try something like that. But yeah, it's sure. because it is really inspiring being like, because you feel more so led into the creative process. I feel like when you see things like that, of, uh, I forgot what song it was like face to face is like just same snippet, uh, same song, three snippets that are only like one or two seconds. And it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, they just rearranged it and then added drums and their own vocals and that's it. So it's like, it seems so easy from these videos. And I know it's not because I can't dive in and be like, all right, let's grab this and do this and whatnot. But it's, it's a tough thing to do. So uh, yeah. as you've been sampling and writing music and creating your songs from your own samples, uh, what's been like one of the biggest things that's impacted you on this creative journey on your career path in doing music? Um, I think I actually was watching a video the other day of uh, this producer, Conductor Williams, who's like does a lot of stuff for Griselda. And, you know, he just had a couple tracks on like the latest Drake album. And um, he put it like really, really nicely, which was like the idea to stop making uh, beats like with producers in mind and like going to impress other producers and really focusing on like how an artist could fit into that space and so like like I, a couple maybe last year I ended up uh entering like a contest with uh honestly it sounds so goofy saying it's ski beats but he's a he's a big producer he's produced some huge things but he has contests where it's like he will put out like an acapella and a pack and you buy the pack and then like create a, a beat from it and yada 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 and so I created these beats where I, I felt like it 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 was like an actual producer's job to where it's like I left the room for an artist to fit on it. And then it got me to the next stage. Uh, and then I was kind of disappointed to find out that the next stage was a beat battle with other producers. And so it was like upload, you know, so and so amount of beats, and then we're going to put you head to head with other producers. And so then it was almost like we took a step back. And now i like all my beats have been so focused on leaving the artist room and not being this overly complicated thing. But then at this next stage of this competition, it was about like make like beats that were pro uh, impressing other producers, you mm -hmm. know, which are actually these super complex, like they don't, rec they don't need an artist on them to become this full song. Uh, and so just having that mentality of just like pulling back a little bit and, not having so much of this mindset of like, you know, if I sample something or if I create a sample that I've got to do these incredibly convoluted, like complicated chops just to prove that like I made something completely different from what it started with. Um, and I think that that's like almost this weird thing that happens in the industry where when you're first starting out and in your first couple of years of producing, you're so focused on like being this impressive producer and then go actually listen to all the artists that you love and all the placements that these other producers have had. And there's this chops are usually like relatively simple. They're not super complicated. They're leaving a lot of room for the artist. So just kind of wrapping my head around that when I'm creating these samples and going like, okay, 
I've got this sample to start from. I don't have to make this crazy thing. Sometimes uh, super like influenced by like West Side Gun and Conway and a lot of the Griselda artists, they really influenced me a lot in the sense that like they have a lot of songs where they're just rapping over the sample. There's no drums added to it. There's, you know, there's like maybe a bass that's added to it. But for the most part, it's almost just a one section that's looped maybe it'll go to a second section for a second but it's really just over this one section that's looped and i love that sound so much so really like being okay with not being this impressive producer because like i said the end goal is to produce for artists and kind of have artist placements and things like that so like being all right with you know if this doesn't have to be this incredibly impressive complicated thing it can just, if the sample was good enough that I created and I like that sound, you know, sure, I pitch it up and stuff like that. But sometimes there's just not that much to do. And um, you and I have even talked about this before, where like, if you look at all of my logic, uh, like projects, like it's, it's like four tracks, dude. I have like yeah. four or five, tracks. like it's a three minute thing with like four or five tracks. It's not like, Sometimes I see these, you know, these videos online of these producers and they're scrolling through and there's 50 different colors and yellow and pink and, you know, like mine, it's like a couple green MIDI tracks, a couple blue audio tracks and like, it sounds good. So like, keep it moving, you know? Um, so I think that's been the biggest impact on me is just like letting myself make something that, you know, even me a couple of years ago, maybe would have looked at and been like, that's not impressive, you know, but now I'm like, that's just not what it's about. And kind of understanding that has been huge. Yeah. I think that's one of the hardest things for artists and, and creative people to understand when they first get into it is the, what, what is quality? Like what is something that they can say, I like that. I think it's good. I want to release it. And ironically, you kind of learn that by just releasing stuff, whether it's good or it's bad, not because it's like, I'm going to judge, I'm going to take my uh, assumption about my work based on other people's opinions, but because when you see how other people kind of like maybe interact with it, or when you reflect back on it after it's already been out and it's considered finished, and then you come back to work, you're like, okay, well, I actually didn't like certain things or I really like certain things and I want to be able to bring those in or I want to do the same thing, but a little bit different to keep things fresh and like that. The understanding of like what your quality of music is and how you create that quality is, is kind of like a never ending journey for an artist. But at the same time, it's like, once you understand that or have a good idea of how do I sense what my quality is, then you can really say, this is what I want to create or this is the path that I want to take. And I feel like we've talked about this a couple of times, but like the, the creative act by Rick Rubin is like all about trying to get that. And like, in fewer words or maybe more, he kind of says the same thing of you got to like it and you are your own standard of quality, not everyone else. And if you're going on other people's and it's not, it's not really going to be good. Um, right. But I would say, dude, like that, how you said it's definitely well put. Um, so start writing a book uh but speaking of books uh has there been a book or a movie show a, a movie show a movie or a tv show that uh you've gotten some sort of inspiration from because i know for me music definitely is a big inspiration but i gotta give my ears a break or shift the gears of my brain to focus on something else so has there been something outside of music that you've, you've watched or experienced that you said you know what this is really cool i'm gonna try and do something with this or it's motivated you to to work harder and get back in there yeah i mean i guess lately there's been a couple things like you said they're not really like necessarily music related but like i just started watching season three of the bear um love that show mainly just because it's like for, i mean i love cooking and stuff like that but it's it's just as far as like my own you know, journey goes just seeing like the passion in that show, like a dude that's just so like passionate about what he wants to do and just like make it like the right way and the organization and everything in that, that has been super uh, motivational on like that level. 
on a creative level, I recently just watched Interstellar again for like mm. the third or fourth time, but I hadn't watched it in years. And I'm just like, almost anything Nolan is definitely just because it's like it's completely you know separate from anything that I would do. I'm not gonna direct movies. I'm not gonna write movies. Like that's just you know. But but just the the level of creativity in those in those movies and the 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 artistry of just like certain shots and certain things. Like like I said before, I do like videography and things like that. Like I do get you know gassed up on making certain creative videos and certain things and trying certain things out. Like that is something that I'm, I'm inspired by. And so just watching sort of the, the creative decisions that that dude makes is just super motivational. And I, 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 I love like putting myself like definitely in the future do want to release like albums and things like that uh, and projects for myself, not just for other artists. And so understanding that like, he has this like vision and he goes into it and, and just like really makes it come to life. Like I love, I love that whole aspect of it. And I definitely want to do that with my albums. I've made like, I mean, I have a bunch of albums in, you know, the hard drive, like every producer that's just like, who knows if they'll ever see the light of day, but a lot of them are like these themed things. And like, there is a lot of sound design and in them and and intros and interludes and, and outros. That's actually something that I had to work hard on on not doing on social media because I realized like, especially for like the rap to this series that I was talking about earlier with like duets and remixes, like if someone's gonna duet something that, you know, they're like split screen on there with me, I can't have like a 16 second intro to the song because yeah. I'm sitting there. You know, but for me, like intros are so like they're they 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 get me like so gassed up because it's like it makes that that drop and that hit when the beat starts just so much more like impactful. And I feel like maybe you won't think like if you don't get the full experience of it, you might not think it's like even when I'm making a track, a lot of times I'm like, oh, this is cool, this is cool, but let me put an intro on it and see how like that transition makes me feel and that almost always is like gets me way more excited about the track than just working on like the actual like section that's hitting i'm like okay let me pull all the drums out pull the bass out pull everything out if i have a sample let me let me put in the part of the track that i sampled that comes before this you know mm. as the intro and like see that transition and it always hits that much harder so just having that like that bigger artistic vision, definitely something that like I pull a little bit from like a Nolan with, you know, Inception and Interstellar, all these movies had a huge impact on me for sure. Yeah, no, I totally hear that. Definitely about like interest because there's songs like uh, Stronger, Better, Faster by Daft Punk. I got that wrong. It's harder, better, faster. It's a lot of those adjectives. Uh, <laughs> but like that little, that little bit of the intro where it's like, it's like a very short like you can hear it yeah. and then as soon as that little part comes on of like it's like some sort of static or i think someone's like turning a wheel and like as soon as you hear that you're like oh i know what song this is and then everything else kicks in and even though it's only like a couple seconds and like a couple seconds is like a minute on tiktok it's right. it's something like you got to cut out but if you heard the song first and then you heard it on tiktok you'd be like where's the intro this doesn't slap as hard as i thought it would for sure. Like the build, the journey is definitely part of like what makes something hit. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I, to me, intros are huge, but again, which is kind of fun why, like, as far as like releasing the songs for sale now, I do get excited about like when people actually go listen to the full track, mm -hmm. it's like they've heard just a snippet on, you know, on, on, in, on social media. And so I'm like, go listen to the full track because like, it's like, sometimes the intro is completely different and you, you're just not going to hear it, you know, and I still get a little bit stubborn sometimes. And I'm like, I'm going to give him a three second intro. Like I got to have something in here, you know, but like something, something to make the build happen. Yeah. But it's also about like experimenting with social media, right? Like sometimes the ones with intros actually do the best on there. Sometimes yeah. they like, you know, trying to figure out the, the algorithm overlords is like a it's, whole job. So. It's tough. Yeah. I will yeah. say, one of the reasons why I like an intro so much and why I 
have something of an intro in my song, it's tough for me to feel like I have I can dive right into it. I'm like, you gotta ease someone into, you know, whenever that kick's gonna drop or something. Uh, mm-hmm. It's kind of like seeing someone like across the room and be like, oh hey, there they are. And then you walk up and it's like, then you start talking and then it's like cool. But the as you're walking over to to, to greet them, you already saw them and it's like you're the excitement's building and everything. And so mm-hmm. for me, I'm like, if there's no excitement that gets to build and it just boom here it starts whatever is going to just start right then it's either got to be really big or there's got to be some sort of emotional connection to that starting point to that part that's really going to hit and not every not every listener is going to be able to have that so when you have that intro or that that little part that like introduces those little bits of the song and it allows more emotional connection more possibility for people to like have that hit so you know I think we're team intro pretty pretty hard. So we need to yeah. get get let's start like a, a trend to say, hey, post your post your intro and how hard it hits after that. For sure. I'm gonna start that. <laughs> Intros only. <laughs> but speaking of like posting all this stuff on TikTok, Instagram, everywhere, where can people find your music and check out your stuff? Yeah. So I mean on Instagram, because I started that one a long time time ago uh my handle is produced by perez um i don't know if it'll come up if you just type i make things i like which this got a little bit confusing because i make things i like is more like my artist name but as far as like a production credit i don't think that's what it'll be but on tiktok it's i make things i like on instagram it's produced by perez uh on spotify if you want to listen to the few releases i have And, you know, we'll have some more coming soon. Lo-fi stuff, that's going to be under I Make Things I Like. It's all one word. Um, So no space bar. I make things I like. Uh, And, yeah, that's usually, you know, that's that's where you're going to see everything from me. Obviously, social media is getting, like, the daily updates and stuff. So if you really want to, you know, get stuck in with with what I'm doing, that's where it's at. Awesome. Cool. Make sure... You go check out on Instagram, produced by Perez, and I make things I like for those daily beats. They are for sale, but I would highly recommend going back and looking at some of the rap to this songs that you have because uh, those have been some of my favorite ones, like especially when it's like duets. Because not to like throw all the way back to the beginning of the interview, but when I've seen some of those duets, like that is a really good opportunity if you're up and coming rapper or if you're just trying to practice your skills you get like that free beat you get exposure from your account from your own account and Mm -hmm. like it's a win-win it's just you can't go take this and sell it so you know i thought that was a great idea and i enjoyed seeing all the the duets that people were doing that because you really get to see how people are creative but not only with your music but also how your music is elevating their stuff at the same time as well so uh if you ever bring that back man you know i thought it was a great series yeah i definitely i think i will once i finish this 30-day challenge uploading beats for sale um just because yeah the same i thought it was such a a cool way of kind of like everybody helping each other out like you know if you're an amazing rapper and you rap on my beat that helps me out if you need a dope beat to rap on you know i've got that side of things and so it's this cool kind of uh coexisting you know like what do you call it synergy a little bit of synergy <laughs> on, uh, on on social media so i think that's really fun so I, yeah. i'll probably get that back soon cool well nick thanks so much for coming on and we can't wait to check out more of your beats online and we'll be looking forward to your album you'll be dropping soon thanks dude i appreciate it man thank you for listening to creative curse podcast i hope you've been inspired by this episode to try something new in your own creative process Follow me on Instagram and YouTube at Blue Sirens Music for weekly Creative Curves podcast episodes. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Thanks for listening.